Hello and welcome to this NDTV exclusive. It's election season and we're bringing you face to face with key players. Today we have with us Priyanka Gandhi Vadra, senior leader of the Congress, general secretary of the party in charge of Uttar Pradesh. Thanks very much indeed Priyanka Gandhi for talking to us. Let's start with Uttar Pradesh because that's really where you've been working. Now all the initial ground reports Priyanka anecdotally and even the first opinion polls that have come out seem to suggest that this is a very much a bipolar fight. Sapa Samajwadi Party versus BHP, Congress remains a marginal player. Agree, disagree? Well, the thing is that in the last two and a half years, if you look at the politics of UP, it's really the Congress Party that has been fighting for the cause of the people. Whether it was uh, Unnao, whether it was Sonbhadra, whether it was during CANRC, it was really the Congress Party that came out on the streets and fought. Um, I think everybody in UP is aware of that. Now, electorally, what uh, the outcome is really, uh, your guess is as good as mine, but hmm. we are definitely putting up the best fight that we have in us. Okay, but it has been a challenge, right, given the state of the party as it was over the past few years from when you took over. Give us a sense of how acute the crisis was when you, when you came into the mix. I'll ask you where you stand today, but when you came in, how bad was it? So, well, uh, in Uttar Pradesh, we haven't been in power for over 30 years. Yes. Um, when I was sent as the in charge of Uttar Pradesh, we had an executive committee of 520 and more people. Uh, it was difficult for me to wrap my head around that because I thought, okay, if this is the executive that is meant to actually hmm. be the operational uh, yeah, lot of huge. people, yeah. How are we going to even establish responsibility and answerability in this executive? Hmm. So, I mean, that's just one example. Um, I think. And in terms I, of the ground, I will say that yeah. I will say that despite not being in power for 31 years, hmm. there were people on the ground who had, you know, been still our Congress workers, old workers who had been there, carrying the flag no matter what. No, no, but and there may have been individual instances. But uh, overall, would you concede hmm. that, as they say, Zameen pe Congress? No, it was, I, you overall were not, I would you were not really. Yeah. Overall, I would concede that uh, our organization was extremely weak two years ago when I went there, which is why for the last two years, hmm. we our primary focus was to uh, rebuild our organization there. You didn't hear much about it publicly. Yes. Um, but we did a lot of internal work. We uh, okay. we uh, rebuilt not just the district level, but the block level, the Nyaya Panchayat level and the Gram Panchayat level. Okay. We did training programs, uh, two-day training programs for over one lakh workers. Mm. Today we have an organization in every village, which was unheard of when I went there. You actually yes, you and claim it's that not, and, it's, and it's not no, in it's paper. Not a claim. It's not no, on no, paper. It's not a claim. It's not a claim and it's not on paper. Yes, of course there are... We do. We have a we have a three-tier verification process that we are using. Okay. And in that, of course, there is a certain percentage which comes out to be on paper mm. and where you get it wrong. But the fact that we actually have people that we we have their contacts, we have their numbers, we can mobilize in every village is absolute fact. And proof of it is actually that the rallies you saw in Gorakhpur and Banaras mm. were uh, organization-driven. So we employed a completely different method of mobilizing for the rallies. Right. We told our Gram Panchayat guys that look, you bring three people. The Nyaya Panchayat, you bring you bring one jeep. The district panchayat, the district uh, head, you bring five jeeps. Right. So it wasn't a, a the usual practice, which is X leader will bring five thousand people, Y leader will right. bring ten thousand people. It was actually a mobilization that took place from the ground, okay. and in a way, it was our test to see whether our organization was actually uh, what we believed it to be. Okay, and I'm so you're happy saying that say the crowds that, that came for those events suggest that there has been a revival. But Trent, I do want to ask you though, that who is going to take responsibility for allowing things to come to that pass? If you look at the Congress's numbers, and you're aware of this, but for our viewers, your vote share has barely crossed 10% in 15 years. You were down to seven seats in the last assembly election. Rahul Gandhi couldn't win the Amethi seat in 2019. Mm -hmm. Surely this is the period where you as in your family, you know, Rahul, Sonia Gandhi, yourself, you're all in charge. Surely there is some accountability well, of how things came to this pass. Nobody shirks accountability or responsibility for things. And I think my brother has time and again said that. 
Um, what we have to understand about the Congress Party in Uttar Pradesh is that the decline of the Congress Party in Uttar Pradesh isn't something that happened in the last five years or six years. Mm. It is something that actually began at the time in the 90s when they were when they made the first alliance with the with Kanshi Ramji. Hmm. That is when the decline actually began. So it's been a long time. I would say that, um, look, despite all that, yes. despite the 30 years of not being in power, despite a weak organization, hmm. you're talking about us today. And we are fighting today. Hmm. And we have managed to build our organization to the uh, village level today. Okay. Which means that um, hard work and complete commitment to actually rebuilding your organization with honesty actually yes. helps. It's and not. It's not very late. I mean, it's. It's. You came in to the picture uh, in 2019, which some would say. I mean, that's late. Well, I mean, you know, there's a time for everything, and things happen when they're meant to happen. Okay. So yes, I guess you asked me. I think you asked me this question when I was 20 years old. Right. <laughs> when <laughs> you? When, when, when are you going to jump in? But so. okay. So you are building on the ground, but the lack of a leadership structure or a face in Uttar Pradesh remains a challenge. I just saw that you had a press conference where you said when they were asked Koi chehra kaun hai? I was being a bit tongue in cheek. But okay. Yeah. But you said that you are the chehra. No, well I said I mean look because I'm asked this question, every second question is the same question. Yes. Now clearly I am the general secretary of Uttar Pradesh and uh, in most ways between me and Ajay Laluji who's the Pradesh Adhyaksh and mm. Mona ji who's the C L P leader we are leading the effort in Uttar Pradesh. You say your now, face is on every poster. It, it is. So, but, uh, I mean, whether now officially we have to say that this is the face or that is the face, I mean, it's unlikely that we're going to do that. But you're saying it's safe to assume that you no, are the you uh, are the sort of No, it's not face safe. Of, uh, no, you, of can't, you can't put words in my mouth. Okay. It, I'm not saying that it's safe to assume. I'm saying that I'm the General Secretary of Uttar Pradesh. The responsibility for Uttar Pradesh is mine and I'm dealing with it. Why aren't you fighting the elections then? Well, you don't know yet whether I am or not. So. Okay. Is, it, is, that it, a, is that an open question? It's an open question for now. So you might fight the election if it well. comes to it? I may well. Okay. Have you given any thought to where you might want to fight from? or? I've left this discussion for a little bit later, so when we do have the discussion and if at all I decide to fight, you'll, I'll, I will let you know. That's interesting. Can we assume from that that you are also in a sense positioned as the Congress's chief ministerial candidate in UP? No, I don't think you should make assumptions like that. I have clearly said that uh, that is not the case. Okay. I have clearly said just now also to you, of yes. course I, did, I made a tongue-in-cheek uh, tongue remark at the press Indeed. conference, but uh, no. I, okay. I don't think it's fair to assume that. But at least we can say that you are considering fighting these elections. That's not, we won't yeah, be wrong in saying that. No, no. And we, the discussion is on amongst us internally in the party in Uttar Pradesh. Hmm. And when we come to some consensus about it, we'll, we'll let you know. Is there a possibility, as some have suggested, that you might be fighting against Yogi Adityanath? No. This, uh, That's no. not on the cards? No. If I may ask, just as a, as a provocation, why not? Well, until you've mentioned it now, I actually haven't considered it. Okay. Hmm. Because often it's seen as one way of trying to establish presence, right? Like Chandrasekhar Azad, Bhim Army, very small party, nascent. He's taking on Yogi in Gorakhpur, hmm. sends out a message. Hmm. Is that something? But there are many ways of sending out the message. I've been taken, taking Yogi on for the last two and a half years. Hmm. So that's my message. Okay. Okay. On the message though, you've targeted the Yogi Sarkar, you've pointed out their many infirmities. The BJP says, look, we're actually doing really well. We've got a slew of welfare schemes we've rolled out. Women, which is a big part of your campaign, are feeling much safer. We've locked up all the gundas. Uh, to that, you would say what? To that, I would tell them to come and look around them and see what the actual situation is. Every woman I speak to says she's unsafe. She is not feeling safer. And most of the, if you look at all the high profile cases, hmm. whether it was Unna or Shah Jahanpur, whatever it was, hmm. you actually find the government and the administration and the police uh, taking the side of the perpetrator of the crime. You often find them vilifying the woman who is the victim of the crime. I don't think that can make any woman feel safe. So this huge, I, 
पिच बाय द गवर्नमेंट बाय द बीजेपी दैट दैट यूपी इज सेफर नाउ हमने सब गुंडों को बंद कर दिया है द ईरा ऑफ बाहुबली इज ओवर आई मीन यूपी एट द मोमेंट इज रन बाय अ बंच ऑफ माफियास दैट इज द ट्रूथ द गवर्नमेंट नोज इट एज वेल एज एनीबॉडी एल्स डज एवरीबॉडी नोज इट देयर इज अ माफिया फॉर एवरीथिंग for example for example there's even a mafia for exam for entrance to uh, government jobs for the exams mm. there's a mafia for everything everybody in up knows that and i don't think anybody in up actually believes that uh, the security for women has improved in the last 5 years and you're saying this is the feedback I'll give you the example i'll give you the example of uh, the now rape victim hmm who was allegedly raped by an mla uh the whole country saw what happened to her she tried to fight her case and there was an accident in which her lawyer was killed her uncle is in jail her father was taken into police custody and beaten to death take the case of arun valmiki in agra hmm. who was uh, accused of a petty theft by right. the police 18 people from his family were picked up put into jail beaten mercilessly i met his brother who's uh they placed the leg of the chair on his hands and sat on it they broke his bones hmm. they beat up his wife who has a one month old child hmm. that took was what the police did and the administration took no action until we made a noise about it so the police and the administration even in lakhimpur kheri hmm. it was very clear that had there not been so much political noise about it it would have been brushed under the carpet the and fir's were not being filed right the post mortems were not given to the families that to me doesn't sound like a government that is controlling crime it sounds like a government that is uh, actually encouraging it and and that's partly why you've also come up with this ladki hu lad sakti hu campaign which is targeted heavily at at women especially young women can i just ask though who came up with that slogan Was that I think we came or? no we came up with this slogan uh, between me and the guys in my office okay uh about two and a half years ago actually or oh, two and a half years ago yeah. but you rolled it out now yeah we were wanting to at that time run a campaign for women and we had, we had brainstormed a little bit and uh, we came up with this slogan and we used it now yeah. okay yeah So, so on one hand, the, the the Yogi Sarkar claims one of their powerful messages is that they've uh, cracked down on crime and gundai and all of that, which of course you've challenged. But the other big claim is that Yogi Adityanath says this is a 80-20 election, right? Now, of course, one could say that's a deeply divisive and and sectarian statement to make that it's basically majority versus minority. But what is the Congress's counter to that? when when he says something like that our counter to it is that he should be talking about the percentage of unemployed youth in up he should be talking about what he's going to do to develop the state hmm. he should be talking about how he is going to improve education in the state health services in the state he should be talking about how he is going to help small industries and businesses to stand back up after the lockdowns and how they have suffered during covid and demonetization etc i don't think I we truly believe in the Congress party in Uttar Pradesh mm-hmm. that the discourse has to change and we have to try to force that discourse to change and when you talked about uh, bringing uh, women mm-hmm. um into the discourse partly that is the reason the reason is that that there has to be some change in the debate and discourse no no fair and enough and when we brought yeah. women up yes once we did mm-hmm. it could not be ignored once we did even the prime minister had to have an all women's rally for the first time in his political career once we did even the samajwadi and the rld had to announce uh, certain things for women right the, and the bjp started making uh, announcements for women which weren't restricted to giving them only one gas cylinder right which were actually sort of more comprehensive that means we were to some extent successful in bringing women into the center of the discourse similarly we think we should bring development and jobs and um progress into the center of the discourse no no that that may be fair enough but equally when one sees this continuous attack on minorities and this is not just limited to uttar pradesh it's across the board why is it that in the way that you show empathy and you would go and visit victims of violence like in unnao or hatras why do we not see that when it comes to the how targeting of minorities that? how can you say that okay who did you see in ca and rc hmm who did you see 
I've been to the house of every single person who was killed in those uh, at that time. Who was, in fact, who was. I've been to houses of 19-year-old, 17-year-old boys who had nothing to do with anything but were standing around and were shot dead. I've okay. been to all the houses. I've spoken up for them. I've participated in all those uh, um, demonstrations. So how can you say that we don't do it? Okay. In fact, I would say. Yes. I would say that the parties, like uh, Samajwadi Party, did not do so. Hmm. Akhilesh ji did not come out at that time. He did not stand up for them. We are consistently saying that we stand for all those who are suffering, every single one, okay. regardless of their caste and their religion. But is communalism still not an issue which will bring the Congress onto the streets, where you actually protest against the kind, of, uh, you know, the, the kind of attacks or the bigoted comments that are being made? But we did and we consistently do. Okay. It, of late, have, has, has there been a, a march, a protest? A, about what? Uh, just about the kind of Look, the, uh, communal... If we, Comments, okay. statements, during, all of that. I believe that during the election, all right, the attempt of many political parties, not just one, hmm. not just the BJP, but the attempt of other political parties is also to polarize the election. It is to make this a debate on religion. Right. We are saying this should be a debate on progress. We are saying this should be a debate on development. If we jump into that, hmm. we are only enhancing what they are saying. We are only helping them. You mean to say even to fight communalism to, to, to sort no, of speak I'm against saying, it? No, I'm saying that during the election to continuously raise the issues that they want raised, okay. to continuously divert the attention of the election onto communal issues rather than the issues it should be fought on, which are development, progress, I keep repeating, uh, is, is, is falling into, into, that into trap. the trap. And I believe and I genuinely believe that actually some of these political parties, even though they are on opposite poles of that discussion, are actually playing the same game. They're all playing the same game. Nobody benefits from this kind of discourse except a political party. Nobody. Right. People do not benefit from it. Public, sure. The public does not benefit from it. The right. public benefits from progress and development. Okay, so you talk of progress and development, but you would have seen what happened because there was this picture of, of you that, mm. that went viral. You met, I think he was Maulana Toki Raza Khan. He's Correct. some kind of cleric. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he's apparently been accused of giving hate speeches okay. and the BJP says this is the Congress saying so, that, we are, that we are against communalism but selectively. So is, he promoting a, a, is, a, he is he in the Congress party? Is he in the Congress party? Is he in the Congress party? He's not. Hmm. So why am I responsible for what he's saying? It indicates that, that you are aligning with him or he's He's giving you, you know, he's offering support. If he's You're offering support, that's his, he's, he wishes to offer support, he's offering support. Okay. So it's not seen as an endorsement of him? or We are consistently saying, we are consistently saying that the discourse should be about uh, progress, development and about what we want to do for the people. That is what we are consistently saying. Okay. And I don't think that the BJP's constant effort is to divert that discourse and to maintain the discourse on religion. My last question on this, were you aware of his record when you got that photograph click? Were you cognizant of the things and he I thought? had not heard that speech he had made, no. Okay. But on a wider point, Priyanka, that apart from just looking at Uttar Pradesh, is there a, a deeper problem with the Congress where it's not just about an organizational dhacha which has to be set up, but you have infighting, acrimony in all states, you have leaders quitting. Is that a is that a is that a, a, a more fundamental problem well, that you're up against? Well, we're a very old party and we're an old organization. So it's pretty obvious that in that say in each state we will have more players within our party hmm. than another party which is new. Fair. It's it's pretty obvious. And it's pretty obvious that these dynamics will ob at a time like this will show up more and everybody will express themselves more and there will be more angst and more frustration. I don't necessarily see this as something uh, terrifyingly worrisome. I think that it's good. I think it's good that there are these different elements in every state. I think it's good that they all express themselves. I think it's, it's good, good to have this level of... I no, mean, I'm saying that it's good to be able to at least engage in a dialogue and a, and a discussion about it, right? Mm -hmm. Of course, this level of uh, um, when you're saying that people are leaving, yes, it's indicating something. It's indicating that they are unhappy. In many cases, it is because of these pushes and pulls. In many cases, they are um, 
feeling that they have another opportunity which they would rather choose. Hmm. And I think that this is part of the flux that has to take place in order to rebuild and re-strengthen our party. So no, I so don't... Yeah. When you look at the number of people have, who've left in UP, Jitin Prasada left, uh, Lalitej Tripathi left. Separately, you've had exits in Goa, Luzino, Felero, Sushmita, Deb has left, Jyotir Aditya, Sindhya left before that. Isn't there a problem of being able to retain talent in the party where people feel that they have to to leave because they're not getting their space or they feel the party has no prospects? Well, I think there are two aspects to it. I think um, one, the first aspect to it is that at least I can speak for uh, Jitinji and Lalitesji hmm. as long as since I am the in charge of UP. Sure. Their opinions, their recommendations, um, how they wanted to function was fully valued. Hmm. They were uh, in touch with me all the time. Um, so I, a lot of the things that they say when they leave about being in touch, not being in contact, etc. I mean, I wouldn't say my point of view is completely different. But I they did have a year, I mean, they did have a, a line to you in the sense. Of course they did. Right. Of course they did. They all had a line to me and they met, in fact, I met, uh, I met uh, Lalitesh, I think, for maybe a week, 10 days before he left. And I met Chitinji as well. But many times and had many chats with him, but then, then you what know, happened? I mean, I can't speak for them. I can't speak for why they would want to leave. Hmm. I can say that, uh, as you say about talent, I can say that um, there are two ways to see it. And now that I've been working in Uttar Pradesh and I work um, right from the ground level, hmm. I see a lot of talent. And I see that some of that talent was also being stifled by people who had much more access than others. Okay. And I think that primarily in Uttar Pradesh, in the Congress party, one of the big changes is hmm. that that access has opened up okay. and the opportunity has opened up. And in many cases, there were uh, people uh, in the party hmm. who had enjoyed uh, positions, etc., who had much better access, much better opportunity and in many ways prevented others from rising. But you're saying so, that even with these leaders, you did speak to them and you were making attempts to, to hold them back. No, I'm not saying I made attempts to hold them back. Okay. I, uh, to be very truthful, I didn't make an attempt to hold them back because once I realized that they had made up their minds, hmm. I realized that they had made up their minds for perhaps more personal than political reasons. And I felt that the kind of battle that we are fighting, it's, it's a very rough battle. Right. It is a rough battle. Right. I mean, uh, some of them lost their elections, some of them lost their homes uh, in which they had lived for many, many years. Some of them uh, were facing genuine existential issues. And I think that uh, once I realized, at least with the ones that I was uh, in yeah. touch with, that mm. that was the case, I didn't feel the need to stop them. Because okay. I felt that the kind of battle we're fighting is, it's a very tough and rough battle. And you really have to have the, you, you have to have the, I mean... The I, guts and the yes, stomach to be able to fight it. the stomach to be able to take it, you know. But is it just specific to individuals and their personal issues or is there also a wider perception amongst your own party colleagues that there is a deeper crisis the party is facing, especially of the leadership, where there's a sense of drift for almost now two and a half years. You've just had a kind of interim president arrangement with your mother. As Kapil Sibyl said, we know who, we know who the leader is and, we, and yet we don't know. I mean, that's his opinion. But as my mother said, that she is a full-time working president of the Congress party, and she is. But and as she said now, when, when that statement that came. That is but correct. For, and but she's been in interim since, you know, since 2019. Yes, but elections have also been announced, and the schedule is out, and the membership is being done for that, and soon enough there will be elections, and the issue will be resolved. Okay, but the fact that it was allowed to carry on like this for almost two, two and a half years, isn't that unusual for any party? Well, look, my mother's been the interim president. Hmm. She's also been president of the Congress party for 20 years before that. So uh, she's obviously a capable president who has run the party even in these two years with her uh, full capability. Okay. So. But the perception that it's not just her, that it's also Rahul and it's also you, you may not have formal positions of, to that extent, no, but, you're, but you're also taking decisions, running the show. I mean, come on. I'm running, I'm, I'm living in UP. Hmm. I'm 24-7 uh, eating, sleeping and breathing UP. 
and that's what I'm doing. I'm not running any other show. I'm running Uttar Pradesh, the show of the Congress party in Uttar Pradesh. But Rahul appears to be. Look, Rahul is the ex-president of the Congress party. Yes, but ex-president. Yeah. Currently not holding any formal designation. Yes. But still seen to and be he, very central and he's to very, the making And he has very clearly said, he has mm -hmm. very clearly when he resigned, he stated whatever he felt and he expressed it very publicly. He took responsibility. Sure. And uh, uh, if people in the party want to consult him for certain things, there's no reason why he shouldn't be open for that consultation. I mean, if he were to close his doors and say, sorry, I'm not available for your consultation and hmm. I have no opinion, that would also not be fair. So you're saying that when we see him at the center of important decisions, that's people, he's not, he doesn't want to, the people are reaching out to him? I'm saying he's the ex-president of the Congress party. Okay. And in that capacity, there are many people who might want to reach out to him to talk to him about issues. The party itself would. And I don't think that there's anything wrong with that. After all, I am the, I am the General Secretary of Uttar Pradesh. Right? Yes. There have been General Secretaries before me. Every now and then I ring them up and ask for their opinion. I consult them on things. There have been PCC presidents before the one there. They are asked to come and sit and discuss and we ask for their opinion, even on small things like tickets. So it's a party that functions in that manner. I don't see any anomaly in it. Is there a problem where you are increasingly finding that even as you try to talk about, now as you said, there'll be elections, there could be new leadership, that the default pressure or presence is always for a Gandhi, that the party can't, I mean, they may say on one hand, oh, it's time for change, but then that, that factor still remains. Or do so you think that's changing? No, do you believe that that's one of the reasons why mm. that even though all of you keep saying that you want to step back, you still find yourself constantly in the middle of decision making? Perhaps that's one of the, the reasons. I don't see a lack of leadership in the party. In, we have such capable leaders. Mm. They are not from the Gandhi family all over the country, in every state we have capable leaders who are at the forefront, who are fighting. No, I'm at the very top. Even at the top, even at the top there are so many leaders. I don't think that anybody, um, for example, I said there'll be a free and fair election. Hmm. I'm sure other people will stand and you they mean should. A, a non-Gandhi could be absolutely. elected Why not? and be a president? Why not? There's no, you don't think, there's no impediment if, to that? Absolutely not. If they stand for election and they get elected, what is the problem? So it would be I that mean, kind of not, election or will it be one of those no, things it, where it's my, predetermined no, that it's... My, the Congress president has repeatedly said that it will be that kind of election. But realistically, do you think that will happen? Do you think if Rahul stands, for example, somebody is actually going to stand against him? Why not? People have stood against my mother. Okay. They so have that, in the past. Why not? So that possibility is, is That open. possibility is very much there. And but please don't discount yes. that... Uh, there is another reality to this than uh, the reality that is sort of um, the one that we see here in the urban centers. Mm. And the reality on the ground of many, many workers of the Congress party is also that there are certain leaders they believe in. Right. And there are certain leaders that they trust. And you mean, you're talking about... I, I, mean that, I mean that when, you, when uh, we have this discussion, we cannot discount that. That there is still, you're saying, a considerable amount of traction that the Gandhis have amongst the ordinary worker. Is that in simple terms? Well, I would put it a slightly different way. I would say that a lot of the workers that I speak to, hmm. and I'm talking about block level workers, district level workers, I'm not talking about the, the big and fancies. I'm talking about the ordinary Congress worker. Yes. A lot of them do have this feeling that they say that, look, we trust you. We have faith that you will do what's right for our party. Hmm. We can't necessarily say that for other people. Okay. And perhaps, perhaps that is also a shortcoming on our part. Perhaps uh, they need to develop that trust in other people as well. Hmm. I mean, and uh, I don't think on our part, if you ask my mother or my brother or hmm. me, we have any, uh, um, you know, sort of... Uh, idea Desire. that we are no or any entitlement to being leaders of the Congress party I don't think so I mean so, I certainly don't I know my brother doesn't I know my mother doesn't so if it I mean I'd be I, uh, we'd be only too happy if somebody else rose from the ranks and everybody had faith in them and and wanted them to lead and you'd be able no to problem. step aside and, and let them take over that's why not if that's what the party wants
Okay, because you did have... If that's what the majority of the workers of the Congress party wanted, right. there would be no issue with it at all. You did try to bring in somebody kind of from the outside, which is Prashant Kishore. It's now public knowledge that you had considerable talks with him. I believe you were involved as well. That didn't work out. What, what went wrong? I think it didn't work out for multiple reasons. Some on his part, some on our part. Hmm. I wouldn't want to get into the detail of that. No, but broadly. But um, broadly, there was a, in, an inability to agree on a certain issues, uh, and uh, uh, which would have, which sort of impeded the, it, the discussion from moving forward. Okay, but it wasn't because again there was this kind of reluctance to allow somebody from the outside hmm. who would then be able to actually take. No, I mean, had decisions. there been that reluctance, there uh, reluctance, there wouldn't have been uh, so many discussions. Okay. So, so there was a serious possibility that he may have joined. At, at some point, yes. But ultimately, it didn't work it didn't out. It didn't work out, yeah. In conclusion, though, um, you know, as you go into these elections, you did experiment, especially when you're on weak ground, you often go for alliances. Yeah. You tried that in 2017. Yeah. Uh, this time, you're going alone. What was the big lesson from 2017? What do you think went wrong with that alliance with Sapa? That, that this time around actually you feel interestingly the big it wasn't no uh, it wasn't necessary there were many many operational difficulties with that alliance um, and uh, so that was the operational part of it but the biggest lesson actually was to go it alone because as long as we were running a campaign on our own steam hmm. we had reached a certain point in UP which would have actually benefited our party and perhaps in hindsight, it was a mistake to go into that alliance. Really? You think you would have done better if you hadn't fought with them? Well, we had certainly would have built our party better. Okay, because their view was the exact opposite. Their, their view was that the Congress pulled the alliance down. That's that, their view. That's their view. That's anyway, their view. Priyanka Gandhi, thank you so much for talking to us and uh, all the very best with your campaign. Thank Thanks you. Thanks very much. Indeed. Thanks a lot.